So here I am in Visual Studio in our simple uh, project and uh, as you can see that we have two projects in our solution. So one is uh, class library and another is uh, the console application. The console application is going to output a exe file, a class library will output a DLL file. And we have referenced the class library file to our project uh, check access modifier. You can add your other projects library reference from this dialog box and go to solutions and add your uh, other projects assembly to your project. So uh, whenever you uh, listen that I'm talking about assembly you have to understand that it's basically means a project so let's really go over very quick we have two classes in the uh, check access modifier project so here I have all the uh, access modifiers written so that you can understand at once so in a class when you do not define any access modifier before any member it could be a method a property a fill if you do not declare a access modifier what it's going to be uh, what the default modifier in the class is private so a default modifier for a class is internal a default modifier for a member in a class in C sharp is private so a private member cannot be accessed outside of the class so you have to be very careful about it so whatever you declare with private or without any modifier cannot be accessed outside of the class that's it and if you have an internal then it can be accessed inside the project or inside the assembly only that's it so if you have a protected modifier uh, a protected can only be uh, accessible if you derived it it could be derived from uh, other uh, assemblies or other projects or it could be derived in the same assembly or the same project so let me give you an example of this protected so protected and internal we have already declared the class a class a like this so we really just go dot you'll see that internal is available inside the assembly or in this case the whole project and uh, the protected is not there protected is not there so to access the protected so if you want to access the protected let's say you define a class so just class it's not a good practice to make class like this let's say class D and class D is really inherited from class A and uh, the C tor if I write uh, these dot then I can you can see that I can access the protected member and this is also true from uh, uh, another assembly or another project as well we're going to see it so this is about the protected and uh, the protected is the most common modifier in PHP uh, C sharp and uh, so on so what is protected and internal it means that protected or internal it will work as protected or internal both at the same time so what's going to happen is uh, if you just dot a you'll get the protected internal just because it has the att attributes or the qualities of internal as well so internal modifiers are accessible from uh, a, a, uh, as the current assembly only or the current project only so that the internals are uh, available from current assembly as well as it will also be available from uh, other projects so here I have another class and let's just quickly uh, uh, so I have already inherited the class from class A if you see that I have already imported the namespace check class modifiers and here is the check class modifiers so what I did is uh, inherited the uh, check access modifier from uh, class A so if I really write this dot 
you can see that I can access the protected internal uh, because just because I have inherited it and I can also uh, access the protected Y but the protected Y if you remember protected Y cannot be accessed uh, uh, inside from the project or inside from the assembly without being derived but the protected internal can be accessed so that's the difference between protected and protected internal so then we have public it has no restriction at all so far you have seen public and the private we have talked earlier that you cannot uh, access it outside of the class so we have static as well Ac static to access that static class static member you just uh, say the class name and then dot and get the access uh, static member so if you really want to access the static you cannot get it by this after inheriting you just can only access it uh, by its class name if you remember from the static modifier lesson so that's it about access modifiers if I miss something mail me but I think that's it so let's move on to our slide Extension methods are released in .NET Framework 2.5. Extension methods are released to solve special kind of problems. Let's say the person class you have seen earlier. Let's say that someone created the person class and give you the assembly file only and you don't like some of the uh, things that the person class do and you want to add methods not modify but add some methods to the person class and you can do it by the extension methods and if you have ever heard of link link is based on extension methods so let's see some of those in coding here we are and uh, let's add our extension method to our project and you can see that writing an extension method is very easy but the requirements is to writing the extension method you have to make the method static so you have learned the static so far so you have to make the method static and then after that uh, whatever name you choose doesn't matter you have to put this keyword after the first parameter that's it you have to put the this after the first parameter and then you write the data type that you want to add this method to so in this case that I'm just doing it to the person class and the person class is here so uh, as you've seen previously that in the inheritance if I really add the inheritance to my project okay, so uh, what happens in the inheritance is that we have methods that's already exist in the person class but let's say that we really want to add something to the person class and so that that extension would be populated to the student as well and uh, by this example you can also modify the string class let me give you another example so uh, in previous days if you really want to convert a uh, string to double what you do is double dot uh, try purse something like that or purse and then pass the string that's it so we have to do like this so uh, if we really want let's say I have a number and I want to convert it to double there is no method so I have to call the double class and then call the purse method to do it so let's say that I want to add a method to this string class so that I have the two double methods so that I could use it and get the double from the number let's do it pretty quick so public static void and then whatever name that you choose to double in this case I'm choosing then this and then I'm saying string then I'm saying that str and uh, we really don't want to 
pass anything to our function we just want to invoke it so uh, in the return oh rather than void we're going to return something in this case we're returning double and return double dot first dot str that's it so if we just go to any any class let's say any any um, portion of the app let's say in the program and we have to uh, include the namespace or uh, namespace of the extension class extension says so let's just delete those or exclude those files so that I don't end up having an error and import this person so that I don't have any compilation error let's see do I have any compilation error so I have so let's access fire okay student and not really interesting that's right now so let's just compile and we're successful so uh, let's really import our extension namespace extension method that's it let's say we have a number var number and it is coming from a string that's it string and we want to double that's it now if you hover over you can see that it's a double type of double that we just added via extension methods so it's that simple and another thing I really uh, want to show as an extension method uh, so that uh, <coughs> you can understand that you could add more things to any uh, fixed class so if you see the person class it's really fixed you can we are not adding anything here but we really want to add something so that it will uh, uh, eventually come up in the student class and in the teacher class so that's the extensibility that we want to have so by this extension method we're going to have this functionality so let's create the person class again so our, uh, sorry student class again um, so we haven't included the namespace see you have the extension method from the person by using the extension method example so it may uh, require some properties that's the first name allies just give the allies and run it you can see that allies is eating because the method calls the eating method so that's it about extension methods if you have uh, any more questions you can shoot but uh, here I'm just showing the basic things there are really very broad topics about extension methods so uh, and system.link is really the best example for uh, extension methods 